from my killer bees with sciatica, a strength workout that's actually good for your low back pain. Grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. Get your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get started with a warm up. And that means that we're starting with some arm circles and high knees. You guys, welcome to today's workout. I am Paula B, your best middle aged fitness friend, and maybe more importantly, somebody who has had sciatica. You guys, today's workout is designed especially for you if you have ever had sciatica or are currently experiencing it. Today is going to be a great strength workout. We're working with dumbbells. Today is going to be moderate. It is perfect for either body shaping or weight loss. A moderate workout like today actually has its place in any kind of a workout routine, especially for you though, if you are working on some goal, but also have some back pain and or have ever had back pain. What I've got for us today is in addition to like full body strengthening, I have some very specific core strengthening exercises that we're going to get started with after this warm up. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with some booty kickers. Nice and gentle today. I'm not moving especially fast for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you are currently experiencing low back pain, moving fast can really exacerbate it. And so that's why strength work like this is especially good for, for you personally. It's good for all of us all the time at any age, but specifically now at this age, it's really good to take care of your bones, take care of your muscles, and take care of your pain, my friends. If you are not currently experiencing back pain, but you've had sciatica in the past, I will tell you that the little stretch of exercises that I have for us here after this warm up, it's actually some stretching, which is why that word was in my head. I have some stretching and some core strengthening that you can do every single day. Yes, truly every single day. I'm actually going to make a little video of just those exercises. It's going to be about five minutes of work that you can do every single day to prevent and also relieve your current pain if you have some. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. The thing about back pain, my friends, is it comes from a real variety of reasons. There are lots of reasons why you might have low back pain and sciatica. And the fact is, there are some exercises that you can do to feel better but you have to do them really regularly. <laughs> and that's the tricky, tricky part. But I tell you what, five minutes a day can actually save you from needing to take five months off of working out. When you take care of your pain first, like we're gonna do in this video, you will be able to do so much more with the rest of your time. Making sure that you are taking care of your pain, resolving your pain issues, is probably one of the most important things that you can do for or your fitness in general. So we're gonna get started with some of our stretches and some of our strengthening. Let's go ahead and get started with some gentle back bends. What you're gonna do is you're gonna have your feet just about hip width apart. You're gonna put your hands right on the top of your glutes slash your very lower, lower back. And we're just gonna lean backwards very, very gently. Wherever you feel a stretch in your abs and a little bit of a stretch in your lower back, that's where you should go to. And then we'll come back up. We're not trying to hold this for very long. These are not big movements. And I think, I personally think that that is one of the trickiest parts of physical therapy exercises like these. Go ahead and hold it for as long as feels good to you and then come back up, take a breath, brace your core, and then we'll gently lean back again. It actually does not take a lot of time or effort to do physical therapy exercises and stretching. What it takes though is patience. This doesn't feel like work and you're not going to feel immediate relief. In fact, some of the stretches might feel a little bit tough, might not even feel like they feel very good right now, but over time, Again, five minutes a day, a little bit of work every day really adds up. We're gonna do one more of this gentle back bend, just nice and easy, making sure that you're bracing your core and then pulling back up. 
Then we're gonna have our feet about hip width apart again. We're gonna pull one knee up to your chest. A lot like the rest of our warm-ups where we do the high knees, but we're actually holding on to this for a couple of seconds. Once again, you're really bracing your core, and then we'll release and do the other side too. Really thinking about holding on to your balance. Your standing knee is soft but strong. If you do find yourself really losing your balance, make sure that you've got something next to you. That's totally okay. Working on your balance is actually one of the best things that you can do for your lower back. So we're just gonna make sure that we're breathing, we're pulling in those deep, deep, deep core stabilizer muscles. This should feel like a really nice stretch for your glutes and hamstrings and even up into your lower back, but it's also at the same time working your core muscles. Those deep core stabilizers tend to be the real problem. When you have sciatica pain, often it comes from your spine not being properly stabilized. And when it's not stabilized the way it's supposed to be, it means that the, the bones kind of rub together more than they ought to. And sometimes they'll pinch the sciatic nerve. That sciatic nerve, as you well know, goes all the way down your leg. It can lead to numbness and tingling in your feet. It can lead to pain all the way down one or both legs. It tends to be, I think it tends to be the left leg. I will tell you though that when I had sciatica, it was in my right leg. I had both feet go numb frequently and I sometimes even had pain in my feet from my sciatica. My lower back was always, always achy. You might or might not have the pain in your lower back specifically, but that shooting pain down your leg, I know you're familiar with that one. And in fact, this next stretch that we're gonna do, also a balancing stretch. We're gonna have our feet a little bit closer together because here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna pick up one foot and put it on top of the other knee, and then we're gonna bend forward into it. Now you definitely might want something to hang on to for this one, if you can do it while standing. This is great for your core, but also, ah, do you feel that stretch way down deep in your glute? We're not going to try and hang on to that one for any length of time, my friends. We're going to go back and forth, of course. But that stretch deep in your glute, that can be a good resolution of your sciatic pain also. Sometimes the pain doesn't come because your spine isn't working super, super great. It comes because your glutes are too tight. There's all kinds of reasons for sciatic pain, and I will tell you that in my case really specifically, I had both issues going on. I had degenerative disc disease, which meant that my spine wasn't working the way it was supposed to, my core wasn't pulling it in and holding it properly, and so the discs were kind of moving out of place, and I had tight gluteal muscles that were grabbing onto the nerve and pulling it, which is the pain that I felt up and down my leg, and why I personally had the numbness and tingling in my feet. Now here's the thing. For me, I had to do nothing but this kind of work for about six weeks before I felt any relief at all. And then, and then I still did this kind of stretching and core strengthening work for six months every single day without fail, several times a day before I was truly pain free. Now, obviously, I still do this work, this kind of balance work, this kind of stretching. You and I have done some of these things together before. It's still a regular part of my routine. Knowing that I'm capable of having sciatic pain, we're gonna do one more stretch. Go ahead and get into a split stance, meaning that one foot is a little bit further back than the other. Both or all toes pointed forward, both feet pointed forward, hands on your lower back again or your upper butt, and we're gonna do that same stretch, that back bend, looking up at the ceiling. Ah, but you can really feel that stretch in the front of your leg too, your hip flexors, and for me personally, down in my calf as well. Knowing that I'm capable of having sciatic pain, 
means that I want to do everything I can to never have it again. I still work very frequently on core strengthening activities, spine strengthening activities, gluteal release activities, as well as getting stronger all over my body. My friends, there's no miracle cure. These kinds of stretches, this kind of strengthening work, it simply takes time and effort on your part. But you know what? It always does. <laughs> like our other parts of our workouts, like all of our workouts, it's not just doing something one time that's gonna make you strong, that's gonna make you fit, that's gonna get you where you wanna go. It's all about repeated effort. Ah, make sure that your core is pulled in, that you're breathing and up. Excellent, excellent job, my friends. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the workout. We're gonna grab our dumbbells. Now today, like I said, I do have moderate dumbbells. I've got the Handy Dandy Gym Boss set for 45 seconds. And what we're gonna do is one slow moving exercise at a time. We're gonna do a side raise with a high knee and you're gonna come across your body. So whichever knee is raised, it's the opposite arm that is coming out to the side. So a side raise, high knee. Yes, this is balance work today. We are absolutely still working on that core strength. We're going back and forth, raising one high knee and the opposite arm and then the other high knee and the opposite arm arm. This is, this is a generous interval today. 45 seconds is plenty of time to get done as many reps as we get done. When it beeps again, we're gonna do a step back front raise. Once again, across your body, really thinking about pulling in your core, thinking about managing all parts of your body in different planes of motion so that we're strengthening not just our body, but also our brain. So a step back front raise means that we're stepping back with one foot while raising the opposite arm. It's almost like a split squat. We're almost coming down into a lunge, but we're not really doing a lot of lunging on this one. It's much more about balance and also, of course, thinking about pulling in your core and using the tops of your shoulders for that front raise. Your palm is facing your body and then your palm is facing the ground. When it beeps again, we are gonna come down into a nice full squat. We're gonna do a squat with the lower half of a letter X. <laughs> which basically means that you're gonna have your hands, palms facing forward. So we're gonna come down into a squat. And then palms facing forward, we're gonna squeeze open those hands in the lower half of a letter X. So your hands are about what, 45 degree away from your body. This is a nice complex exercise, working your lower body and then working the middle of your back. When it beeps again, we're gonna do a high knee biceps curl. So we're gonna do biceps curls across your body again, one hand at a time while the opposite knee comes up. Lots of thinking and coordination today, but you'll definitely notice a complete lack of anything going up over your head. So here we go with a high knee curl. Yes, I'm really having to think about this one. So your elbow is tucked into your waist. As one high knee comes up, that opposite hand comes up at the exact same time into a biceps curl. Awesome job. When it beeps again, we're gonna do step back delt raises. Now this one, we are gonna do both hands at the same time, but we're only gonna step back one foot at a time. We're moving our legs in all different planes of motions between the high knee, the stepping back, and the squatting. Getting all of your leg muscles in every plane of motion, getting your hamstrings, your glutes, your quadriceps, without doing any kind of, here we go with that step back delt raise. So we're gonna step back, with your palms facing your body, you're gonna bring both hands up to just about your chin, really leading with your elbows, thinking about the tops of your shoulders and the middle of your upper back doing this work. Core is always pulled in tight for this kind of work. My friends, we are getting a full, full body workout while protecting our back, 
Not doing any kind of twisting today, but we're still working our abs, still working our legs, our upper body, working our whole body. When it beeps again, we're going to do squats with chest openers. So once again, coming down into a squat. As we come up, your hands, elbows wide, open out to the side. That's why this is the last exercise in the circuit. <laughs> I didn't mention that yet, but this is a circuit today. Who doggies, this is some tough stuff. Without putting our hands over our heads, because when we put our hands over our heads, it does put us in some danger of recruiting our lower back muscles. When it beeps again, we're starting again with that side raise, high knee. And here we go, nice and open there, good job. We're thinking carefully about the movements that we are doing. So side raise, high knee. I really have to think about this coming across your body. And we're not trying to move fast. This slow moving strength work, so good for those of us who really enjoy the fast pace of cardio. Really having to slow down and think about pulling in your core, thinking about excellent form is probably one of the best things that you can do for your lower back. Focusing on those deep core stabilizers means that you're working them. When it beeps again, we're doing that step back front raise. Once again, across your body, challenging your core in all planes of motion. That's how we're working our abdominal muscles without doing traditional abdominal work. So a step back, front raise. Doesn't matter how far you step back, you are shifting your center of gravity. So it's not just a tap back. You're moving your whole body back. Your hips are gonna hold on to your center of gravity while pulling in that core, thinking about awesome form. Nothing with any kind of twisting or overhead motion means that our low back is safe, but my goodness, we're still getting plenty of muscle building work. When it beeps again, we're doing that squat with the lower half of the letter X. Breathing. This one got me moving a little bit faster. So here we go, down into that squat with the lower half, making sure that you're really squeezing from the middle of your back. You could just swing your hands back quite easily, but intentionally squeezing the muscles that you mean to be working. That's the great thing about strength work in general, is that it really gives you a chance to think about which muscles are working and intentionally ask them to do the work when it beeps again. We're doing high knee curls. So once again, those biceps curls whew, accompanied by one high knee at a time. Lots of great balance work today. And here we go. So one arm and one knee coming up at the same time. And then the opposite arm, opposite knee coming up at the same time. Now here's the thing about sciatica pain. You can do other kinds of workouts. Most doctors, my doctor, specifically told me that I could do anything that didn't hurt me. The trick with that though, is that lots of things didn't hurt me while I was doing them, but they hurt me later. When it beeps again, we're doing that step back delt raise. And it's why I do advise personally, not a doctor, talk to your doctor. It's why I personally advise more moderate work, slower moving work. And here we go with that step back delt raise. So hands coming up underneath your chin with your elbows leading the way with that big step back. Your doctor will have the best advice for you personally, and please pay attention to that. But what I will tell you as your general fitness trainer is that Moving slowly, taking care of the pain, doing the physical therapy work is the best thing that you can do. Everything else, everything else can be on hold. It doesn't mean your fitness dreams or goals have to be on hold. You can still lose weight while you're taking care of your pain. You can still work on body shaping while you're taking care of your pain. But take care of your pain. And then here we go with those squats. 
with the chest openers, elbows high. Almost forgot to keep my elbows high on that one because I'm really feeling all this work. You guys, this is already the end of our second circuit, which means that after this we are done. Yeah, but we're not quite finished. If <laughs> you know, I've always got one final thing for us and I've got two more intervals, one on each side. We're doing a front kick, back kick. It's all balance all the time. You're welcome to drop your dumbbells if you'd like to. I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to mine. Whew, giving it a little bit more challenge. It's our finisher. It is a little bit tougher than everything else we do during the circuit. So pick a leg, any leg. We're gonna front kick and then back kick. Now I'm doing a little bit of arm motion here, basically a little bit of a biceps curl. It's kind of a bonus. It's not really important. It's helping me feel like I can keep my balance. <laughs> when you are doing balance work like this, you're thinking about moving slowly and with control and pulling in that core. When it beeps, of course we're going to do this exact same thing on the other side. <laughs> no such thing as a free lunch here. There are times when we're a little bit uneven, but not entirely uneven. I always make sure that we do one interval on each side so that we are getting nice and strong. Oh my gosh. And here we go on the other side. Front kick and back kick. Excellent. Now here's the great news. The next time it beeps really is the last time it's going to beep. We're going to do a little bit of cool down stretching. Going to include a little bit more of the kind of stretches that we did at the beginning because my friend, you cannot overdo that kind of sciatica relief. That's the great news about physical therapy exercises. They are really intended to relieve your pain and not overwork you. So we don't have to worry about, oh, I can only do so much of one thing or another, like with your dumbbells here. And speaking of dumbbells, we're putting those down. Oh my goodness. Ah, <sighs> my friends, turning off the timer. <sighs> I'm actually gonna do a little bit of tapping here. Gonna do the arm openers <laughs> and closers real quick. Give yourself a big hug, a big pat on the back. Open it up, open that chest. Excellent, excellent job. You can do your core strengthening and back and glute stretching exercises as often as you like to. When I was in active sciatica pain, I did literally morning, noon, and night versions of the exercises where I would get down on the ground in the morning, do some pointer dogs, do some bridges, do some pigeon pose stretching. During the middle of the day, I did standing balance work, and then at nighttime, I got back down on the floor and did floor work again. Mostly because, I mean, for two reasons. Number one, I was very young at the time. <laughs> Number two, I actually don't mind floor work. For our purposes today, I know that standing and doing this work probably feels best to you. Let's go ahead and do that pretzel stretch again. It's a tough one, but it's so worth your time. Putting that ankle right on top of your opposite knee and then just bending forward into it. My friends, here on screen, I'm gonna have for you, I have a whole series of videos about sciatica pain with more core work, I've got some more stretching work and I've got some foam roller work to help relieve the tightness in your glutes. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Oh yes, <laughs> this is a great cool down, <laughs> working on balance again. But on the other side of the screen, I will actually have an extended cool down. You can absolutely Absolutely be done for the day, but if you'd like a little bit more stretching, I've got it here for you. Down on the bottom of the screen is the letter P. It's an invitation to go over to Patreon, where you can make a monthly pledge that helps me make free workouts for all of us. And thank you so much if you do choose to support that way. Totally appreciate that. Here's our last stretch on the last side. On the other side of the bottom of the screen, that's a picture of me, and that's actually a subscribe button. Make sure that you click that and the bell notification so that YouTube lets you know every time I upload a new workout. Thank you so much for getting strong with me today. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.